Okay, hi everyone. So in this tutorial, I'm just going to show some very simple approaches to using common peripherals in your computer, such as your mouse, your keyboard, and your webcam, and starting to calibrate them as interactivity devices for touch designer. In this first example, I'm pressing buttons on my keyboard here, and I'm just changing between these three videos. Um, now, what's important to recognize here is that changing between videos is just one change we could make. You could change between anything you want. You could change colors, change sounds, change visual effects. It's just the principle here of um, calibrating the signal that's coming in and converting it into something that can drive, in this case, a switch. I'm pressing one, two, three on my keyboard and I'm changing the index of this switch. So let's build this really quickly. Um, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete everything except my three videos here. These are just videos from my computer. Um, you know, you just grab a movie file in and you set this to your movie folder and grab whatever videos you want to work with. Or of course they could be images, they could be colors, they could be anything. In fact, let's, let's add a fourth just to prove the point. Let's make a constant here. I'll make it the same size as the others and I'll make it green. All right, so I've got four inputs here. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna add a switch. And a switch is um, one of a few ways you can just move between inputs. What you'll notice with the switch is it works um, with whole numbers. It works with um, integers, not floats. So you'll see that when I'm at these decimal values here, nothing's happening on the switch. It doesn't actually clock over until it reaches uh, another integer. Okay, a, a difference would be like a crossfade where we can use an integer value. So if I grab these two here and I crossfade between them, I'll just preview that in the background, we can use an integer value and have sort of some of one and some of the other. But right now we're going to look at the switch. I'm just going to add a null here and then I'll add an out so it can go to perform mode. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to add interactivity so that we don't have to come into Touch Designer and click the switch. We'll just attach it to the buttons on our keyboard. So to do that, we'll grab a keyboard in chop and I'm going to type the keys I want to use here, which will be one, space, two, space, three, space, four. You know, if you want to use space, you could type in space, although I wouldn't recommend it because it'll also stop and start <laughs> your touch designer network, which is probably going to cause other problems. So try to use keys that are not being used in touch designers interface because that can get confusing. Okay, so here are our keys. We just need to add a couple of things. The first one is a logic. And we just set the um, channel pre op to radio button. So that will just kind of highlight whichever one we've just pressed. These are different sort of logical operations. Toggle would be like on off. And yeah, look, we, we might look at, look at that a little bit more in class. But for now, radio button is what we're going to use. And then we add a fan, set that to fan in, and that will just grab the active channel, which is exactly what we want, and a null, I'll put that at the end. So now, as I press my buttons, when I press one, I, I get zero, because that's, that's our first index in, um, in you know, computer language. We always, our first value is zero. So one, two, three, four, these are the buttons we've mapped. And all I need to do is just export this chop reference to my switch. Now, if I preview um, my out here, there I've got my green constant, my first video, my second video, my third video, and my fourth video. So what's important here is not, you know, just simply making the equivalent of a television remote control, it's realizing that we can use the keyboard to change between all sorts of different effects. And going into this switch, you could have, you know, all sorts of different things. And of course, you could use this to control a switch that's also, you know, in chop land, 
you could be switching between audio inputs and using the same signal. And you can really create all sorts of different effects all mapped to your keyboard. And I'll leave that for you to creatively explore. I just wanted to show you the technique. Okay, so I'll stay with this network for a moment. What I'm gonna do now is show you how we can use the mouse as another input device. So this time I'm going to grab a mouse, if I can spell, mouse input in. And what we'll see, we'll get here is TX and TY are representing the horizontal on the X and the vertical on the Y, which is giving us a, a floating point value of where our mouse is on the screen. So let's just do something simple. Let's use that to move the position of an object. So I'm gonna grab a movie file in. I'll grab our handy banana and I'm going to add in a transform, a couple of transforms. And I'll go out to a composite. Might even put a null here, just for fun. Yep, okay. And we're gonna composite from this null. We're gonna composite our two videos together and then we're gonna put that to the out. And looks like we need to change the composite from multiply to over. And that's good, we've got the banana on top. So in that first transform, I'm just gonna scale the banana down by, I don't know, 0.5 and 0.5. Okay, there's a banana. And then in this transform, I'm gonna use the input from my mouse. I'm just gonna take the mouse input straight to a null because I'm not sure if we're gonna to need to do any mathing here. Let's just see kind of how it feels. It might already be in an, a good range, but I've got a feeling the X, the X, if we look at these numbers, it's going from basically one to minus one, and the Y looks a little bit similar, but it's closer to positive a half and negative a half. And that should be correct, but I've got a feeling the X is gonna be a bit out. But let's see. And using this null, of course, we can add in some changes in operation without breaking our network. So I'll go into this transform, make my chop active here and I'll drag the TX into the translate X chop reference and the TY into the translate Y chop reference and now yeah, it kind of follows my mouse but on the X it is it's going too far so let's add in that math here I'm just going to right click add in a math and I'm actually going to I'm just going to select I'm just going to select the TX here and I'll just copy and paste that select and grab my TY here. And merge. That's what I want. Okay, so I'm going to merge those two back together and pop them in the null. And that just means I can just do this operation on the X and I'm going to range the X at the moment we're going from minus 1 to 1 to minus 0.5 to 0.5 so now you'll see that, that banana it's following my mouse much much better it's it's not perfect we could probably play around with that a little bit more um, but it's working okay just as a quick kind of um, I guess to point something out it doesn't have to be as boring as just having an object follow, it, follow us around on the screen, right? Like if we grab a constant here, you know, we looked at this a little bit last week, but if I wanted to take a constant, whoops, take a constant, go out to a null, and let's give it a color. Let's maybe start anywhere. I'll just change the resolution on my constant to the same as my videos. And, um, well actually no, it, I've already got, we've got this video switcher hooked up, so I, I'll do it on this constant here, that makes a lot more sense. Delete that one. I'm just gonna add an HSV adjust here. And we're going to use the mouse to change the color. I might just stop previewing this so we can see what we're doing. But I've just added an HSV adjust in between my constant and my switch. And now we're going to, here we've got 
uh, this is being used to um, control our position and it's mapped quite nicely between minus a half and a half but if we make another null here and do a different map what we could do is we could say okay we would multiply that am I correct here if we if we want that to go from minus 360 to positive 360 if we multiply it by 720 minus 360 positive 360 that looks good then we could just grab either of these and we could put it on our hue offset and that should yeah that's going to change our color so now if I press four oh, one, one two three four ah of course I need to just preview my out again as I'm moving uh, I'm changing color um, again just using the mouse you can probably do far more creative things with the mouse of course I'm just showing you um, how to get the signal in and of course I think you can also grab the buttons as well if I call this like button now if I click my button I'm getting that whoop, <laughs> I'm getting that signal as well but of course um, it's also if I double click I'm also affecting touch designer okay all right let's move on to the next technique okay hi everyone um, so in this technique this is a technique I've borrowed from our wonderful colleague um, Brian Chung who does absolutely fantastic work um, on touch designer and publishes all sorts of stuff on YouTube I'll link to his account in the description this is an adaptation of of one of Brian's um, older motion tracking uh, techniques um, it's really it's really nice like you'll see if I move my hand I can more or less get this um, banana object to follow my hand and we're doing this without any AI or machine learning or, or kind of um, uh, you know complex stuff with machine vision we're just doing a really nice trick in looking at the difference here between um, what our video input is seeing now and what it was seeing a few frames ago and we're using that difference to control movement um, it's a great technique it gives us a nice clean signal so let's just quickly rebuild this so I'll delete everything here and first of all I'm just going to grab a video device in which will be my webcam there I am there and just so that things kind of match what I'm looking at we're going to reverse it because here I'm raising my left hand but you now it looks like my right hand so I'm just going to middle mouse click here and grab a flip top mirror it on my x-axis so now that's my left hand and it looks like my left hand okay then we're going to grab a cache and cache is just going to store I'll set the cache size to 16 it's going to store 16 frames and then we can grab a cache select and we can set that to look back minus five frames okay and I'll just drag the cache onto the cache select um, so the the cache select sort of is looking at cache one and we've got that data connection then all we need to do is grab a difference top and I'm going to plug both of these in here and we should see if I might just uh, I have to go back to my cache make sure it is on always cook and I can also just type the operator here operator open brackets quote diff one end quote close brackets now our diff one is looking at cache one and it's looking at the difference so it's kind of a you know it's like a nice visual effect anyway um, it's this sort of lag and I don't know, it makes my head look weird when I move my head but we're going to use that that little bit of filtering we've done there to um, highlight any pixels that have changed you know if you think about it um, all that's happening here is my background is not changing because the camera's not moving so any movement will register as a change okay so let's filter this a bit more we're going to add a monochrome top to make it black and white then we'll add a threshold and that will just do some more kind of um, filtering just so we have white pixels and a transparent background then we're going to add this thing called blob track which is a really kind of really cool technique where it, it just tracks if we look closely as I do movement you'll see these little squares popping up and they're blobs that touch designer is just um, using that as a representation of detected movement 
Okay, so I'm going to double click here and go into the chop space and grab an info. And I'm just going to drag my blob track onto the info so that it, you know the operator here is looking at blob track one. And it's giving us all of the data basically that's being sent out from um, blob track one. And you'll see if I start moving my hand, we get extra data appearing. And that's our blobs. Okay, so we want to grab that. So I'm going to middle mouse click here, grab a select. And in the selection, I'm going to look for blob zero u and blob zero colon v. So when I start moving, we're going to get u and v represent the um, two dimensional coordinate locations um, of this blob when it exists. And when I stop moving my hand, there's nothing there. So if we just use this signal to determine the location of the banana, you can see we'd have a problem that when I'm not moving, there's no data at all. Um, so what we can do is if we add a constant, and I'm going to add some sort of placeholder data for when there's nothing coming in from the blob track. So I'll make a channel called TX and I'll set that to 0 0.5 and I'll make another channel called TY and I'll set that to 0 0.5 and then we'll just add a feedback and that's simply just going to um, feed these numbers back in on one another. The last thing I want to do is I'm going to rename these to TX and TY. So now I've got this number that um, is feeding back together the 0 0.5 and 0.5 and then when we're getting that blob track info it's um, adding that in or adjusting um, the number coming in from the constant. So next thing we need to do is we're just going to put in a math and put in a null. Ooh, oops, sorry, press the wrong button. Let me just go back inside. Put in a math and put in a null. Okay, so um, in this math, we just need to do a small change, which is our range. We want to go from 0 to 1 to minus 0.5 and 0.5. And that should be our kind of um, XY position location for the banana. So let's just add in the banana. Now, again, of course, I'm just showing you a technique to, to grab this movement. Um, you don't need to make this with exactly the way I'm making it. This is really just for a demonstration. But that banana, we find it in the movie file in. It's just one of Touch Designer's default objects. So I'll bring that in and I'm going to add in a transform. And I'm going to add in another transform. And then I'm going to add in a composite. And I'm going to grab my video from the flip, put that into the composite and then grab the banana. And at the moment, it's probably doing some sort of like multiply, or some sort of operation like that. Yes, it's on multiply. Let's just set that to over. So, and I can reverse my order here so that the banana's on top, that's great. So in this first transform, I'm just gonna make the scale of my banana smaller, put that down to 0.5 and 0.5. And in the second transform, I'm going to look at these translations and I'm going to grab these numbers from the null. So I'll make my null viewer active by clicking the bottom corner of the operator, go into the transform and just drag with my left mouse, chop reference and chop reference. And if I'll just add an out so that it can perform and I can preview that here, that should be working. It is working, but we need to filter that signal. It's a really noisy signal. Um, so I'm just going to add, this is why we use nulls. After this math, I'm going to add a filter. And now, okay, so it's a little bit laggier. It's got a bit of sort of a delay to it, um, but it's a much smoother signal. And we could change that. I could make the filter width lower, you know, 0.7. I can make the effect 0.7. And it'll probably be a little bit more jumpy, but it's a bit quicker. So I actually think it looked fine with that lag. It kind of had a nice bounciness to it. Um, okay, so that's the, the motion tracking module. 
All right.